The anti-lock brake system, or ABS, is a very clever system that allows vehicles to stop faster and in a more controlled way. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how it works. Braking is a process that is all about friction. Right, so there is friction between the brake pads and the discs, and then there is also friction between the wheels and the surface that the vehicle is, is driving on. And what we're doing in this whole process is transforming the kinetic energy of the vehicle, so the movement basically, into heat or thermal energy. That way we get less kinetic energy, in other words the vehicle is slowing down. That's the idea of braking. And now the question is, how can we do this faster and in a more controlled way using ABS? And in order to understand that, we've got to understand some basic principles about friction between objects, which I shall now demonstrate using this box and this battery that is on top, it, on top of it. I take this battery, I put it on top of my box. So right now, what I've got is two objects and these objects are being pushed against each other, right? Because I'm holding this object in place and gravity is pulling this battery down on it. That means there is friction between this battery and this object. And when I take this object with my fingers and start pulling it this way, I am working against that friction, right? So the f when I take this object and I start pulling it in this direction, the friction force is trying to push it in this direction. It's trying to, trying to stop me from doing that. That's why it's friction, okay? I can calculate how much friction there is, how much force I need to start moving this object using a simple formula, which is the friction force is equal to the static friction coefficient times the force that is pulling this object down. So the force pulling this object down is, is the force of gravity, and this friction coefficient is just a number. I'm not sure what that number is in this case, but that's based on the material of the box and the material that the battery is made of. And we're using a static friction coefficient because the battery isn't moving right now, and it only starts moving when I start pulling it. On the other hand, we could also have a situation where the battery, for some reason, is already moving of, over this object. Right? Maybe the object is tilted and it's slowly sliding down like this, so it's already moving. And in this case, because the battery is already moving, we don't use the static friction coefficient. We use the dynamic friction coefficient. And it turns out that a dynamic friction coefficient is lower than the static friction coefficient. In other words, the friction force of an object that doesn't move and starts moving is larger than the friction force of an object that is already moving. Now let's see what happens if we replace this battery with a wheel. In this case, the solder wire. Okay, so we have some solder wire here. Now, oh, this is actually kind of hard. <laughs> this wheel, when it's rolling, over this object, it seems as though we should use the dynamic friction coefficient, right, because it's moving. But actually, if you look at this closely, you can see that it's actually static, right, because it's it's not sliding over the box, it's rolling over the box. So a rolling wheel has a static friction coefficient. However, if this wheel for some reason locks, right, maybe, hint, a brake, starts acting, then the wheel starts sliding and it gets a, a dynamic friction coefficient, which means there is less friction. And if we translate this into a world where this wheel is on a car, and this is not a box but it's a road, it means that when the wheels of a car lock up because the driver hits the brakes very, very hard, the car actually takes longer to stop because it, ta it takes longer to stop than if the wheels were just barely rotating because the friction between the wheels and the surface the car is on is determined by a dynamic friction coefficient which is lower than that it would be with a static friction coefficient. So what ABS attempts to do is make sure that the wheels, that's why it's called 
anti-lock brake system, it's trying to make sure that the wheels keep rotating at all times. So how does it do this? Well, there is a sensor located on each one of the wheels. On, on modern cars, it's on each wheel. Right? There is a sensor on each wheel, and that sensor is constantly monitoring the speed at which the wheel is rotating. And those, this data, the data from each sensor, is sent to a control unit, which is just a computer. And that computer is constantly comparing the speed of the wheels of the car and checking if they're not locking up. Then, at some point, for some reason, the driver of this car hits the brakes really hard and um, one of the wheels slows down dramatically. So much that the ABS controller thinks, hmm, this might be a wheel that is going to lock up very soon. And then what it will do is release the brake pressure on that wheel a bit so that it doesn't lock up. Um, or maybe it's on two wheels. In that case, it will do it on these two wheels, or maybe it's on all four of them. So it's monitoring all the wheels, and it's monitoring, are they going to lock up anytime soon? And if they are, it releases the brake pressure just a bit to keep them rotating. And if they speed up again, of course, it will apply some more brake pressure, because we don't want the car to just roll on um, into, into a wall or something. Right? That's not very good. And this way, we are applying as much brake, braking force as we can without locking up the wheels, which means the car can stop faster. Um, and you might be thinking, well, I could also do that as a human, right? I could simply be very careful with my, my braking pedal and, and, like, kind of make sure the wheels don't lock up. Well, yes, you could, but you can't do it as well as the ABS system because you can't do it independently on all four wheels. Um, and also, you can't do it as fast. The ABS system can apply and release brake pressure, again, independently for all wheels, about 15 times a second, <laughs> which is much faster than any human could do with his foot. So that's why it works really well. Now, finally, ABS does also have limitations. Um, and one very, very well-known limitation is when you're on loose soil. So when a car is on, on some sort of gravel or, or sand, um, it's actually a different story. And the reason it's a different story is because if we have a wheel, and let's say this is now soil, and the wheel at some point locks up, on a road, that's bad because we have the friction is lower then, right? Because it's sliding, we just discussed that. On soil, however, when a wheel locks up, sort of a, a pile of dirt starts to build up in front of the wheel and that significantly increases the drag which means you sl slow down significantly faster so on loose soil on loose ground it actually helps to lock up the wheels if you want to stop very fast which means in those situations um, ABS might not be an optimal solution but anyway now you know what ABS is and how it works I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course thank you for watching